didn't stop there either. You know, <laughs> well, what happened? It's a real progression of truth. <laughs> you know, there was a pivotal moment on my mission where in desperation I just fell on my knees and said, God, all I want is the truth. And if the truth is in Mormonism, I'll serve you till my dying day here. But if it's somewhere else, give me the courage to face what that's going to mean for me. And when I accepted Christ and became a Christian, I thought that was kind of the end of that journey. But it, in truth, uh, you know, the truth is a person, ultimately. The truth is Jesus Christ. And so the journey wasn't finished, because in the Catholic Church, of course, Jesus is more real than any place else, the real presence of Christ. So it was a continual journey towards the truth. What happened was, I, in my ministry to Mormons, I was trying to uh, use an apologetic that the early church, the church Jesus established, believed in the Trinity, which Mormons deny. And we can talk about that later. So I thought the best way to do that, not only to prove it from Scripture, is why don't I look up the earliest church writings I can find, and from that I could demonstrate that the early church believed in the Trinity and not Mormonism's uh, polytheism. Well, I came to surprising uh, <laughs> finds in the study of the early church fathers, and that was apostolic succession, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist, the primacy of the Roman bishop, uh, tradition in the church, and that concept of tradition very early on. And so I was faced with a real dilemma now, uh, studying the church fathers with what I was going to do with all this new information that surfaced. It's interesting to, if we had more time to trace your changes in understanding aspects of the truth through that journey. But apostolic faith, apostolic succession is one of those where, with a very strong perspective on it as a Mormon, a, little, a different one as a Baptist, and then a different one as a Catholic. Sure. Well, of course, as a Mormon, Mormons believe that the early church that Jesus Christ established fell away, fell into complete apostasy, and was gone from the earth probably in the first century, and had to be restored through Joseph Smith in the 1800s. And I embrace that position for most of my life, of course. As a Protestant, I was taught to understand that the church, of course, was an invisible, could exist in all the different denominations. But there's always that kind of uh, thing in the back of your mind, you know, what happened to the church that Jesus Christ established? And why are there so many denominations? I couldn't explain that as a Protestant minister. And so I was faced with that question again. I worked with a Catholic man who I had tremendous respect for, who later became my sponsor into the Catholic Church, I was always trying to get him to come to the Bible studies I was teaching because he was Catholic, and I assumed because of that he didn't know Christ. And here, the next time I'm talking to him, I'm telling him about all these things I'm finding, and can he help me? And of course, he loaded me down with Scott Hahn tapes, and I picked up a couple books and began to really intensely study the claims of the Catholic Church for the first time. It's amazing how many people I encounter that kind of read their way into the Catholic Church. Yeah. You can't help uh, but see the truths of the Catholic Church if you study history. Isn't it, in some ways, revision history that in many ways keeps people away from the Catholic Church? Oh, boy, I think so. My understanding of church history was so flawed, especially as a Mormon, that the early church fell away so quickly and it, was, it had disappeared from the earth. And the evidence really points to just the opposite. The church was alive and vibrant. Even though it struggled with apostasy in the church, certainly we can't deny there was problems and many fell away from the church at points in time. But the church was alive, and Jesus did keep his promise that he was going to be with his church always, and he would not leave his orphans. That is such an important promise. Jesus promises the apostles, not only that I will be with you always, but that I'll give you my Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth, help you remember. I mean, that's a promise of the Son of God. Yes. And anyone that says that the church fell away basically says Jesus was a liar, or he had no power, or didn't know anything about the future. I mean, it's a denial of all that Christ is. Yeah, he became the fool of his own parable in Luke, that he <laughs> built something and didn't have the resources to finish it. He began something he couldn't finish. And you know, Joseph Smith makes a very bold claim. He says, to paraphrase him, I will boast in this, that I could do what neither Paul, nor John, nor Peter, nor even Jesus could do. I could hold the church together. And at this I boast that I can do what no other man on earth has done. Oh, man, that's amazing to imagine the people in his neighborhood, Joseph Smith's neighborhood, following him. And maybe there's so much to cover, maybe we could begin, let's talk a bit about Mormonism, and how it got started, and, uh, and how it has spread around the world.